what to vex solve one of the most fundamental problems of machine learning that is how do we represent words in such a way that machine learning models can make sense of it in this simple sentence let's say we want to represent the word cat we want to be able to represent it in such a way that we can pass that representation into a model and then make some predictions on it prior to word to vec one of the best ways to do this was using one hot encoding so let's say your corpus has 10 words you assign some index to cat let's say you assign the index 3 to cat then you can use a one hot encoded vector which is nothing but zeros except in the third place where it will be one you can now use this vector as a representation for cat and similarly for all other words you would get similar representations which will have zeros in all the places except the index which is assigned to that particular word so for example this could be a representation for mouse now this did not work well because of two reasons number 1 is because of the scale issues if you have hundreds or even hundreds of thousands of words you are essentially having to store a large vector which is zeros in most places and one in just one place this also did not capture similarities between two words we know that cat and mouse are both animals and cat and mouse mouse usually live near each other so we want to be able to capture these things into a representation and we want those representations to be as dense as possible so that's how we come to the idea of word to vec the central idea of word to vec is called distributional hypothesis so i just look up distributional hypothesis in simple terms it just means that words there are that are used and occur in the same context tend to have similar meanings so we'll use this idea of distributional hypothesis to create a pseudo classification task and then use that task to learn representations for our words so let's see how we go about doing that let's say that you want to learn the representation for the word chasing right we don't know what chasing means but we do know what the neighboring words of chasing are so our pseudo classification task would be to take these neighboring words which are cat was the and mouse and predict our target word which is chasing now we do this over and over all over our corpus by creating many of such synthetic samples so one other sample could be let's say you want to learn the representation for mouse then your sample would be but the ran into and the target word would be mouse you do that over and over and you get a lot of these samples and you learn this classification task and while learning this classification task you also learn the representation of cat was the and mouse so before we jump there let's go ahead and create this particular training data so for training data set i'm going to be using a very small corpus uh, in fact this corpus only has 14 sentences uh, the first method that we are using uh, is the get vocab method Uh, this method just goes over the corpus and finds out uh, what is the total vocabulary size uh, which is nothing but the total number of unique words in our corpus and it also assigns a unique id to each word in the corpus so let's go ahead and run this uh, now if i want to see the vocab size uh, so the vocab size is 23 now we can also look up uh wh what is the id for each word so if i want to look up the id for cat uh yeah that's one uh for mouse uh, it is 3 uh, you can also go the other way around with an id you can find out what the word is uh so what is the word for 3 so the word at id 3 is nothing but mouse all right so that's our function number 1 uh the next method 
is what will create this particular input data set uh, and the main method there is this get training data method which will take sentences as our input and a window size and and return this particular data set so a window size of five would mean that it will go into the data set and look two words before and two words after the current word to make this set and the current word will be nothing but the target so let's go ahead and run this uh, let's just look up w one of the examples at random uh, so let, let's check x of 24 right so this is the training input that we are looking for so these are these four words that we were talking about uh, let's see what the target is so x y of 24 will be 3 um, let's see let's convert them to actual words instead of IDs so id x2 word of i i in yeah so for so one of the samples from our data set is cat and r chumps and the and the target in this case and the target in this case is nothing but mouse so I believe it is this sentence uh, where the current word is mouse and the neighboring words are cat and r and chumps so that's one training samples and uh, in total we have created uh, uh, let's see what the length of x is so in total we have created 58 such samples to train on so now that we have our training data ready let's go ahead and now define the actual model which will learn the representations for each word so let's sketch out the model before we define it uh, so like we mentioned we are going to be giving four words as input to this model and we'd be getting a target word to predict so obviously one layer of our model would be nothing but the embedding table uh, and this table would be of size vocab cross embed uh, vocab is nothing but the total number of unique words that you have in your corpus so that's going in this direction and embed is nothing but the size of the embedding that you want to learn so each row in this table represents the embedding of one of the words in your vocabulary so if you go to row number one you will get the embedding for word one if you go to row number two you will get the embedding for that word two and so on and so forth so just like that you will get the embeddings for all the words that you are giving as input based on their ids then the second layer would be just averaging these vectors together to get one vector so we'll just average all of these vectors out into one vector and then finally we want to map this average vector back to a vector which is the same size as vocab and we want this vector and our target vector to be as same as as similar as possible and we'll use a cross entropy loss here to then back propagate the errors and updates the weight in each layer including the embeddings so after a couple of rounds of training the embedding for each word would be trained in such a way that it represents that word really well uh, now let's go ahead and define this model in code so i'm going to be using a sequential model so tf.keras.models.sequential like i said our first layer would be a embedding table so that's the embedding layer in keras and the dimensions are vocab size and the embed size um, we have not defined embed size so let's define that uh, i'm just going to be uh, learning a two-dimensional representation for each word so i've set embed size as two uh, and the input length over here i've set that as four because we are passing four words at a time All right uh, next we add our averaging layer so that's global average pooling 1d so that will just take all of the vectors and average them out 
and then finally we want to map that vector back to vocab size <clears throat> uh, let's set the activation here to softmax so that <clears throat> all the all the values in the final layer are converted to probabilities so that's our small really small model uh, let's go ahead and compile it model dot compile so the optimizer we'd be using will be adam and the loss would be nothing but categorical <coughs> cross <coughs> entropy loss all right so our model is ready let's go ahead and train it so to train the model we can just call the fit method uh, x is our input y is our output uh, let's train it for 10 epochs and let's set bat size to 6 all right uh, so the model has trained uh, and the loss seems to be to have reduced a bit Let, let's train it a bit further all right our model finished training now we can pluck out the embeddings for each word from this model so first of all we need to get the embedding layer uh, so that's the embedding so you can do that with the get layer method that gives you the embedding we need to pass it the input which is nothing but the word id so let's say we want to find the embedding for word mouse so we will pass that in as input and that will give you oh sorry this has to be a tensor so convert to tensor right so this is the two dimensional embedding that you are getting for the word mouse uh, let, let's make this a little prettier so let's say uh, vector input vector is this and this is the word that we want to see so the word is mouse and the final embedding for that Is nothing is nothing but these two words right so now we can just just using this these three lines of code we can now get embeddings for each of the words so let's go ahead and find the embedding for all of the words so for word index and word in word to idx dot items so that will give us all of the words that are in our vocabulary and and their IDs sorry word is the first thing uh, and let's uh, store them as well so word to vec is where we will store them um, I'm gonna just copy paste these two lines so that's the word based off of that word we'll create the input vector and then we'll get the embedding for that word so this is nothing but our embedding uh, and then finally we can append that to this list so this is our word and this is our embedding all right so now if i just see one of the items so for cat this is my vector for some other word words this is the vector uh, for and this is the vector and so on and so forth now let's go ahead and visualize these vectors in the 2d plane to see if it actually learned from that small corpus the similarities between different words so to do that we can just do a simple scatter plot so let's draw a figure uh, with size 10 comma 6 so that's a 10 cross 6 figure uh, let's do a scatter plot so our x-axis are nothing but all the zeroth indices in every vector so for i in word to vec and 
the y axes are nothing but the first index in every vector. So that's this for i in what to like. And now let's annotate each point with text. So for item in word to vec, uh, the word is nothing but the zeroth item. Uh, so that's this. And then we can annotate each point by taking item of one of zero, item of one of one. So that's the X and Y axis and the text, which is the word. Um, Let's set font size as well to something like 12. Let's call plt.show. All right, so this is the plot that we have. You can already see that the words like cat and mouse are similar together, uh, are placed together because uh, their contexts are similar. Uh, let, let's train the model a bit further and see how this embedding space rearranges. All right, so I trained a model a bit further. Let's see what the new plot is. All right, so you can see that the model, after training the model further, you can see that words like pals, buddies, chums are closer together. Some of the verbs have come together. Some of the other kind of words have, like sleeps, lives have also come together because the way that they were expressed in the corpus, they had similar context. So they end up with similar embeddings. Uh, if I go back up to the corpus, you can say that the words like pals, chums, buddies, almost has the same context every time. They have cat and mouse r as the preceding context and the and, and they have no next context, context here. Uh, but you can see the idea behind how the word embeddings are getting adjusted based upon the corpus. And you can see finally that in our plot, these three words ended up together. All right, so that's word to vec uh, Let's look at some of the tips around word to vec now. So with word to vec you get three major tunable parameters. Uh, so these three hyperparameters would be your window size. So how much, uh, how many words do you want to see preceding the current word and how many words do you want to see after that word? So that you can control based off of window size. Uh, the next thing is embedding dimension. I use the embedding dimension of two because I want to see the words in two dimensional plane. Uh, but the ideal size uh, would be something like 200 or 300 for most applications. And finally, <clears throat> you can set the type of the word to vec model that you want to build. Now, uh, there are two major types, uh, either CBOW or SkipGram. Uh, CBOW stands for con continuous bag of words that we just trained. Uh, essentially, the difference is with one, you are taking the the window size or the window of words and then trying to predict the center word, which is the current word. Uh, it is it, it trains really fast, like we just trained our model, uh, which was CBOW. Uh, it works well for large text corpuses and it gives you a very good representation of words which are very frequent. Uh, the alternate to that is a skip gram model, which is just the opposite of CBOW. So in this one, you just give the center word as input and then try to predict the neighboring words. So th this works well for, uh, this works well when you have a small model training data, but does not really scale very well. Uh, but the advantage here is that you get bet better representation for even rare words. Uh, so those are the three uh, three knobs that you get while training your own word to vec model. Uh, but uh, anyone rarely trains their own word to vec model now. If you need word vectors for your ML application, you can just go ahead and download pre-trained embeddings. Uh, something like fast, te fast text embedding would, uh, I, I believe would suffice uh, most, of the, most of the application's needs. Uh, so it'll be just rather than training from scratch, you can just go to the fast text website and download uh, their pre trained embeddings, which is which is trained for on, on a good chunk of internet. So you would get very good representations for almost all of the words.